So here's what's gone down. So Quindor has been designing LED boards for a long time. So about a year ago, Quindor came up with the Dig Uno, which is actually this one right here. <clears throat> and yep. it's been great. And then about, it's probably been about six months ago that you started pre-assembled Dig Unos, yes. which opened it up to even more people to be able to get them. Because for, at the beginning, it was a very uh, DIY, you know, buy the parts, build it yourself, which is great. It's not too hard. We've done it yep. on the stream a couple of yep. times. Um, but they are available now if you if you don't like soldering. Um, and they run WLED beautifully, right? Yeah. WLED, actually, I think I discovered WLED thanks to finally listening to some people who uh, have been trying to tell me for a long time. But I discovered WLED like last maybe October or something. Yep. And so we found this perfect fit. WLED, Dig Unos, beautiful, right? Yes, absolutely. Well, Quindor, in his, in his uh, never-ending quest for LED control dominance <laughs> in the universe, <laughs> has continued to uh, push the boundaries of, of LED control boards. And he came up with this one. This is the LED Dig Quad. Yes. The Dig Quad. So tell us, tell us a second about the LED Dig Quad. Uh, so, um, so instead of a single channel board, it's now a four channel board. And the main focuses for the board were, were adding, um, well, four output channels. Uh, more power handling, so it can handle up to 30 amps continuous with 50 amp peak load, etc. And uh, it has five output fuses with seven output terminals for power. So where if your LED projects get bigger, you need to do power injection. And what these boards allow you, instead of having one positive and one negative terminal, you have seven positive and seven negative terminals uh, divided over the five fuses. So you can do your power injection runs much easier and safe. Now this board takes advantage of the ESP32 and lets you have four outputs. Four digital outputs. Now we've been talking to Air Cookie. Air Cookie is in the chat too. He's the uh, the uh, initiator and the creator of WLED. And it's on the roadmap to get multi-channel output. So you can use actually the four channels that are on the board. But it's not there yet. Someone else, and I forget his name. Penguin. Peace Penguin. Peaceful Penguin. Yeah, Peace Penguin and some other guys who were working on a well, an issue in the GitHub to try and get multi-output working, actually got it working. And so we're calling this what were we calling this pre-alpha or something? Pre -alpha. Uh, we're calling it pre-alpha. Yes, but it's working, and it's it's actually working quite well. I've been running it all night, and Doctor Z's has been running it all night, and it's stable. And now we can do, uh, we can hook up an, an LED strip to all four outputs and run separate effects on those in WLED. It's amazing. I've got it set up here, and I know Quindor has it in his background over there as well. So I've no, got it I'm set up here for a little demo. You ready for yes. some demo ness? Okay, so this is this pre alpha version of WLED, but it's been modified so that you can have multiple strips so we have here one strip running one effect a different strip running a different effect a third strip running a third effect and then these little pixel things just because i wanted to find something that was different running a fourth different effect and i can go here to my segments and i can change what effect it's running so when i when i highlight this I can change the effect. Let's take it to something that is pretty clearly different. Now we go back here and you can see just this one changed. Yep. And I can go, I can unclick this one and I can click on this segment. And then I can change that one to something as well. We'll go back here so you can watch it change live there, right over Quindor's head. Okay. <laughs> so what, what I've got here is each of these segments is a different strip of the LEDs, or basically a different channel coming off of the Dig Quad. And it works. It works yeah. really well. Four LED strips doing something else or doing the same thing, actually, whatever you want, from one controller. If you want them to all do the same thing, you just select all the segments and then pick the thing you want them all to do. And now they're all doing the same thing. 
And you see, I'm, I'm turning some of them off and the others are still going. How do we get this firmware? Okay. Yes. Uh, official support is still coming somewhere this year. It's on the roadmap and there are, they are going to work on it. We prepared a binary, which has it set to 300 LEDs per channel. So then what you do is you install that binary on a dig quad. It has all the right uh, GPIOs and stuff like that configured. And then once WLED boots, you go into the LED preferences and you set it to 1200 LEDs, which is four times 300. And even if you don't have those connected, that's fine. They should all turn orange. And then you start making segments of the amount of LEDs you actually have connected. And that way you can make the segments and set effects to those segments for each LED strip. So you can only save it to slot 16, which will save the separate segments, but all the other preset slots don't save segments. So yeah. So initially it just treats it like one 1200 long LED strip, but mixing it with the segment feature makes it work beautifully. Somebody asked, is the, are they gonna come with this firmware? No, they're not. At whatever point that the official WLED release yeah. includes this, then yeah, that will be part of the new ones as they get shipped out. But I would not expect that to happen for four months, six months, something like that. Yeah. So, but if yeah. you have a Dig Quad, you build a Dig Quad, you, you, you want to run this, you can download that binary from that page that Quindor just linked. And then you'll just, you just pop your, uh, your ESP32 off, plug it into your computer and upload yeah. the new binary. It's not, it's not hard. Easy. Easy. It, you can do it very easy. You don't need to do any fancy programming or anything funky. Once you do that, the things you need to do, the steps you need to do, you need to go to LED preferences and you set this LED count to 1200. If you're going to use the binary where each channel is giving 300, you set this to 1200. Okay. Another thing that we, that we realized was probably important is to disable this uh, brightness limiter, right? Because yes. it's going to think that you're actually going to light up 1200 LEDs, which you hopefully aren't actually, you know, you probably could. If, but if you do, you're just going to have to, you're going to have to be the safety valve. So you're going to have to understand how much current that's going to be and what you're going to do with your wires and things like that. This does have fuses, right? The DigiQuad has fuses. So yes. it won't yes. let you physically, burn anything down. Physically, you're protected. No worries. Yeah. So it won't let you, it won't let you burn anything down. But if you leave this limiter on, you might get some dimming that you don't want, right? It might make it dimmer than it needs to be. So I yeah. turned it off. Yeah. The next part is using segments and uh, yeah so let me interrupt real quick please so you can set it to the exact amount of leds you have connected and then you could use the limiter if you wanted to but then you have to compile the binaries yourself but for me and i think for a lot of for a lot of us that compiling is opens up a whole new opportunity for a lot of errors and if you do it all the time and you're good with it, then no problem, right? You can do it. And then you yeah. could set each of these channels exactly the way you want them for your LED strips. And that would be ideal and best. But um, for if you don't want to do that, this is actually a pretty decent option. So how do you do it? So this first segment is going to be the strip that's connected to LED pin one. So on the yes. dig quad, there's four LED pins and they're just numbered one, two, three, four. Segment yep. zero is what's connected to LED pin one. So in my case, I have this big strip with the real dense LEDs here, and there are 144 of them. So I set the segment to start at zero and to go to 144. And then I hit the checkbox, and that segment is set up. Then I would hit add another segment, and that would be segment number one. This yes. would be the strip that's connected to LED pin number two. And in my case, I've got this strip connected to that one. Oh, actually, no, it's this one. It's this strip. It's 30 LEDs. So this one has 30. So I start at number 300, remember, because we just basically yep. assigned 300 to each channel. So this one starts at number 300, and it goes to 330. And that will just be that one strip. Okay, check mark to save that, and moving on to the next one. The next one yep. starts at 600. And because it has 60 LEDs, in my case, it goes to 660. Check mark. Move to the last one. In my case, the last one has 50. And it's going to start at 900. And it will end at 950. 
check mark and done. Now, what I would recommend and what I kept doing last night is every time I messed with my segments, I would go over here to saving mode and save them. Yeah. Okay. To slot 16. Yeah. Sl save it to slot 16 because if you don't save it and your board reboots or, or something, these segments won't be preserved. If you haven't saved them in slot 16, they won't be preserved. And then it's just like I showed you in each segment, you can turn on, you can turn on or turn off each segment. You can change the effect of each segment with when you have the check mark on it, that's controlling that segment. So if you want to control one of them or multiples, you put those check marks on and you pick the effect that you want those to show. When you do first uh, turn on a segment, the intensity and the speed will be all the way down to zero. So it might look like it's not working. So you have to adjust the time, uh, the, the speed and the intensity for each of the segments after segment zero. I think segment zero, it was, you know, in the middle, but for each additional segment, it, the default starts out at, at zero for both of those things. Yeah. So it might look funny, might look like it's not yeah, working. That, that's have that's to definitely that. why this is a bit of an alpha hack. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a but it boy for being alpha we mostly oh, called it we we called it pre-alpha last night when we were playing with it because we yeah. were, we hadn't even talked to air cookie yet or anything and so we were like well let's before we do this or before we say anything we're going to make sure that everybody understands that this is not official <laughs> so pre-alpha seemed to be as far from official as we could as we could get exactly <laughs> and because this again this is this is a, a dig quad this is boosted boosted uh, logic so i've got my led strips right next to this but this could be feet, you know, 20, 30, 50 feet away. Oh, yeah. And you would no have problem. no problem with the data signal getting there nice and clear. This, so uh, this is the GitHub I posted in the chat for the, well, the multi-output uh, WLED. Uh, Peace Penguin there, he uh, has the instructions for what you have to do if you want to modify this yourself. Basically, you go yes. to this this wrapper file, which is part of, you know, everything that goes into WLED and you have to set a few things. First, you have to set the number of strips you're going to have. So because the dig yep. quad has four, you can do four. You don't have to do four, but you can do four. Okay. Uh, so you change that number there. The pins that you're going to have it connected to are these pins. Is that correct? Quindor 16, three, one, and 26. Yeah. It's in the, I have a pinout guide on my website. And then yep. down here, you can see that he's got it set up so you could use eight pins. Now the Dig Quad board doesn't have eight outputs, yep. but if you were doing this your own custom thing, you could do up to eight. Uh, yep. And then here, this is where you would say, "Oh, my first string has 350 lights. My next one has 500 lights. Uh, the next one has whatever 50. And as long as this grand total doesn't exceed 1500." The total of all these can't exceed 1,500, but if you wanted to balance it differently and not just have 300 in each one, you could go in and do it yourself. But the, but if you, if you want the simple method and you have less than 300, then Quindor's got the binary already ready for you. And that's it. And then, so you save this and then you compile it and you make your own binary and you upload it yourself. Uh, a couple of questions, and you guys are asking great questions. I'm sorry I've been ignoring them. I know Quindor's been typing some stuff in there. We're so grateful to have Eric Cookie here answering questions as well. Yeah. Um, so Gary's got, brought up a question that we asked right away, and Eric Cookie's answering it about E131. Yes. Well, we maybe we can do that live on the stream. What do you think? Uh, you want to try it now? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, because the thing we did with the segments, we should be able to do in X lights too, right? We should. We should. <laughs> okay, let's try it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, hey. <laughs> let's try it. Let's try it.